Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here at my next uh, Transformers Robots in Disguise 2015 episode reviews. This one is going to be for episode 10, Can You Dig It? and episode 11, Adventures in Bumble Sitting. So uh, yeah, overall I thought that the, both episodes were fun um, and interesting. Um, probably up there with some of the better episodes in the season so far. Um, but they really didn't do anything to really quell any of my kind of fears with the for the show kind of going forward and um, really solve any of the problems that I have with the show fundamentally. That being that it seems a little bit too kid focused and seems like such a departure kind of tonally from um, Transformers Prime, which it's obviously a continuation of. Um, I'm just really struggling with the fact that there's very little continuity between episodes, there's not a lot of really like proper character development or just a sense of anything really happening in the future. There, there's little bits here and there that they seem to be setting up but for the most part it's kind of not the type of show that I really connect with all that much. It's, it's kind of doing a similar thing I'd say to the current Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles show on Nickelodeon in that th there are times when it's good but too often than not they just revert back to this kind of classic kids show format of just um, each episode is a self-contained thing it's just like this enemy appears the turtles have problems at the start eventually capture it at the end nothing really added to the whole series when I think turtles and transformers both have the potential to be on the level of say a Legend of Korra where it can be extremely character focused, it can be extremely plot focused but still appeal to kids um, with kind of clear obvious kind of character arcs slash plot progression. I think it, it shows like this that really kind of make me go like why are you looking down on the kids you're aiming this at so much like do you really not think they can remember a plot especially when especially in Australia where I'm kind of um, following their airing um, where they're airing two episodes a week like you don't really need to worry too much about continuity between like kids remembering stuff because you're airing the show so quickly and um, so I just wish they would like bring some plot into play again it's still fairly early days you know like Star Wars Rebels as I said that is a show that I was I had some of the same worries that I'm having about Prime right now in terms of a lot of the early episodes being quite character focused. They're not setting a lot up plot wise or real in depth character development wise. But then they really just started to get like really good and interesting towards the end of the season. So I'm hoping that that's what this show is going to do. It's going to really impress me um, towards the end of the season when all of this stuff that they're slowly starting to introduce into the series starts to kind of pay off and um, the problem is that it's so slow that I almost don't think that they're actively trying to get me as an audience member to like believe that something is happening that something interesting is going on and um, but um, hopefully they'll do something like there are bits and pieces that I think are really good in this show there's been a few scenes in a few episodes where like Bumblebee and Strongarm's relationship has been like really interesting um, it just in terms of like sh she really wants to kind of be this kind of pupil of Bumblebee's and have him teach her in the same way that Optimus taught him and you have kind of Bumblebee's kind of insecurities about will he ever be as good as Optimus come out and you have Strongarm's just desire to almost be like Bumblebee like there's some really good stuff going on there um, and even the, the first episode here, the one with Jazz, um, there was some interesting setup about like how Jazz is like Sideswipe's hero and Bumblebee and Jazz know each other because um, they seem to be roughly the same rank at this point in time. There was some cool stuff, but I think definitely the strength of that episode was that you had Jazz come in and as I said uh, a couple of weeks ago, having a new transformer come in especially like an autobot who is probably going to be the recurring autobot who comes in and out of the series very experienced can always add to the team like um jazz is it, it, that that's something good to add to any series and i thought jazz was really cool i um, he fit the kind of stereotypical kind of jazz personality that you expect you know kind of all about the music sounds that unique way of talking and 
just this level of kind of he's experienced he's skilled and he's wise and kind of is transferring that to sideswipe who he seems to kind of relate to a little bit and he sees that sideswipe has some skill and you know ultimately like the episode wasn't anything fancy when it came to jazz teaching sideswipe anything in that ultimately it was just like don't think so much about what others are thinking of you that's what led to this guy ped's downfall because that's all he cared about he's just like what are you doing what, what what's going on there um and so there, there was that like he all he cared about was just like oh, I'll, I'll help the, all these other people with um this energon and um, then i'll be the best because i'll rule the world and stuff like that and um, and then Sideswipe was obviously trying to actively impress Jazz and all these other things when, you know, he's skilled when he just acts normally. Like, when he did the amazing wall jump thing off the kind of, uh, the pile of Autobots kind of stacked on top of each other and then the side of the cave wall, he didn't do that to actively impress anyone. He did that to just help out in a really bad situation. And Jazz was impressed, everyone else was impressed, and Sideswipe wasn't even aware that he impressed anyone. So it was a interesting approach. They didn't make it anything like important to the point where I'm just like, okay, Swipe Swipe has learned a lot from this episode and is really going to be changed from here on out. That's the sort of stuff that's not happening in this series where someone makes a big leap in progress in one episode and it continues into the next one. Not at all. No, con very little continuity between episodes here. But still, J Jazz definitely was the standout star of the first episode. Just um, I loved the design. The voice acting was good. Um, he seemed to, he added a new dynamic to the series with another experienced Autobot. Um, and just he he seems to be almost set up as that Wheeljack character that Prime had. That he's going to be like a or ID's version of uh, Wheeljack, and that he's going to appear a couple of times. I assume he says he's going to be back at the end of this episode. And I would assume also that he may become a more uh, kind of re regular character on the show at some point down the line. Um, maybe when, when the villain kind of uh, plan really kicks into gear and like it is a Autobot Decepticon battle. Um, and yeah, with, with Jazz you also got some information about Cybertron, how they're reacting to this team being off doing their thing. And that yeah, Jazz was sent off to investigate the Al Alchemor, Alchemor what's the name of the ship, um, I think it's Alcamore. Um and he is sent by the Autobot High Council to do this, and he basically just says, like, okay, they, they want me to kind of bring you guys back, but, okay, I understand that you need to keep them here, so I'm going back to report, and I'll probably be back at some point. It was, um, it was nice that they addressed that, that now it seems like Cybertron knows what Bumblebee's doing. He's protecting Earth from these escaped Decepticons, and maybe this also opens the door for more um, Autobots to come into play maybe in Season 2. And also, I assume, this will ultimately lead to more of the Prime cast coming into play. Because I'd love to see Ratchet, RC, Bulkhead, um, maybe Jack, Raph, Milo come into play um, and see what they're up to. Now that it's really heavily aware that, at least to Cybertron, that Bumblebee's crew is doing something on Earth. So that was cool. The Decepticon in this episode, Ped, not the most interesting guy. You know, obviously stealing Energon cubes. That was pretty cool to see them again. Um, but ultimately, he was just like, he was out for himself. He wanted to stockpile Energon cubes so other people would have to rely on him. But he wasn't thinking too far ahead. But he was really powerful. So, you know, one, another one note, one episode Decepticon. Nothing massively interesting here. Um, se second episode, the Bumble Sitting episode, um, kind of really like po point to this episode in terms of like, this is the sort of thing like you are heavily appealing to kids, and this is exactly what this episode was. As I said, it was fun, but you could have done something more with this episode. Like ultimately, this episode was Bumblebee gets hit with one of these spikes that has poison on on them. He reverts to basically young Bumblebee. And starts acting like a child the entire episode. And Strongarm has to take up a leadership role. While they take down this other Decepticon, Quillfire. And he was... Like, I really... I only watched the episode like an hour or two ago. And 
I'm really struggling to remember much of anything about his personality. Um, he seemed a bit like all over the place, just like panicky and stuff like that. And he was just like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? Oh, fire turns back and fires quills into people. Um, but yeah, like he wasn't the focus of the episode for the most part. Like his actions caused Bumblebee to, wait, to be the way he was. But ultimately the episode was focused on, hey, look what Bumblebee's doing and strong arm in a leadership role. And I liked how ultimately she succeeded at a leadership role, but realized that, oh, I, I realize how hard it is to be a leader. I'd prefer to just be part of the team for now. That's something that seems to be at least somewhat consistent in the series. Strong arm wanting all this responsibility and progress right now, but kind of realizing very quickly that I'm not quite ready for all of this. Uh, we've had it a few times now, like she kind of got a little bit in over her head on the solo mission and learned from that. Now she's kind of, since she is second in command, but still very inexperienced, she's learned that, okay, I need a lot more experience before I can lead properly. So th that was kind of fun to explore in this episode. And um, as for Bumblebee himself and the whole Bumble sitting concept, it was interesting to see that he was a very much a prankster in his uh, older days before we even see him in Prime. Um, and Sideswipe seems to somewhat respect him for that, but even he gets kind of annoyed with Bumblebee at some point. Um, and yeah, they, they just did the classic kid show thing where, okay, they... The mature character is now reverted to a form where they're much younger, they were a prankster, and they basically seem invulnerable to anything bad happening to them because of their child, childhood energy and playfulness. And that's exactly what they played off in this episode. Bumblebee just running around like a mad thing, um, ends up defeating the Qu Quillfire by complete accident by just messing with him on the, on this kind of trampoline thing and like smashing him around a bit and avoiding all these dangerous attacks completely by like accident um so again fun but really nothing notable here i suppose it was interesting that we did find out that bumblebee is somewhat of a prankster which maybe plays into why he seems very understanding about sideswipe while the rest of them are just like hey, this guy's a bit of a hooligan, like, we, we shouldn't really be having him on our team, like, why are you so open to this Bumblebee? And Bumblebee understands because he was kind of like that in the past. So, that kind of explains it, but again, this would have been the perfect episode to do something with, like, a flashback. Show maybe Bumblebee back when he was like that. Show Bumblebee's first uh, interactions with Sideswipe and just really play that up and play up the connection between those two characters but they didn't and that, it's one of those episodes that really highlights what this show is very unwilling to do like um like just for example like you, you take a show like say in japan that's kind of technically on this level in terms of like popularity probably like a Nar naruto or something like that if naruto did an episode like this where the sort of kind of did it like this uh, at some point in the series but they they make these connections um, between that. So, but this one is kind of unwilling to do that. So, again, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where I'm so glad that Australia are airing two episodes a week, because if this ever if this if I was watching this weekly, I'd be frustrated very very quickly. But because it's a very snappy airing, you know, two a week. We got three the first week. And we're very quickly approaching, you know, like, this was the end of the season. And um, I'm more willing to give this show a chance. Because I think I probably would have almost, like, really kind of stepped back from the series a bit. After, like, four or five episodes. If there was, if I had to watch them one a week. Um, but because not much is happening, two a week works. But um, I think next week we're... I think next week is the episode we're going to see some more mini cons and uh, drift come into play, which should be fun. I'm really excited to see what he's like if he becomes a proper member of the team. I, I think we expect to have see Prime again very soon, Optimus. So that should be fun. And another Decepticon in Fracture, I think, is coming in. So, so next week should be pretty exciting. But uh, yeah, I, as far as I know, China a couple of months ago aired the first 13 episodes, but. I'm not sure if that's like season one or just half of season one. 
Um, so we'll see what happens, but uh, that's my review on these episodes. Thanks for watching, and bye.